Today's K movie, we have 그때 그 사람들. The President's Last Bang. It is 2005 satire slash black comedy film by Im Sang Soo. And the film depicts the events leading to and the aftermath of the assassination of former President Park Chung hee And he's assassinated by his right hand man and Korean intelligence agency, KCIA director Kim Jae Gyu. In the late 1970s, uh, actually it's 1979 to be exact, Korean President Park Chung hee played by Song Jae Ho, leads a life of leisure and um, access. And this is the when he has been ruling the country for 18 years as a dictator. Heavily insulated from his citizens and enjoying lavish surroundings, Park Jong-hee feasts on the finest foods and constantly finds himself in the company of women. When Kim Jae-gyu, played by Han Seok-gyu, the disillusioned head of the South Korean Secret Service, finds out that he's suffering from a terminal disease, he resolved to assassinate Park Jong-hee for the good of his country. The film's portrayal of Park Chung-hee drew uh, controversy, leading to a lawsuit against the film's makers by Park Chung-hee's only son, Park j i m a n In 2005, a ruling by the Seoul Central Court ordered that three minutes and 50 seconds of documentary footage, mostly of demonstrations, be censored out of the film. In response, the director had the excise footage replaced with a black screen, for its running time. During its theatrical run, both nationally and internationally, only the censored version was shown. The ruling was appealed, though, and in August 2006, overturned, with the court issuing the following statement. We mostly broadly confirm the right of free expression concerning the depiction of public historical figures. The court also concluded that several scenes were an unjust smear against the former president and ordered MK Pictures, the production company for this movie, to pay President Park's family 100 million won, roughly about uh, 105,000 US dollars. Almost the entirety of the film focuses on the few hours before and after Park Jong Hee's assassination on October 26. 1979. Undoubtedly, the most controversial aspect of the film is uh, its portrayal of Park. In the film, he's shown to be a cowardly libertine who's seen having late night drinking parties, p o w i n g young women, and especially having much admiration for Japanese culture to the point of occasionally speaking Japanese himself. The memory of Japanese occupation remains fresh in the minds of many Korean audiences, and it was seen to imply Park had affection for, if not association with, Korea's former colonial rulers. During his time in office, Park Jong-hee saw several unsuccessful assassination attempts. These included the infamous 1968 Blue House raid by North Korean commanders and a 1974 attempt by a North Korean sympathizer that ended up killing his wife, Yu g y o n g s u instead. However, his luck ran out on, finally, um, October 26, 1979. On that day, Kim Jae-gyu, the director of the CIA, which Park had created in the semi-mold of the American CIA to prevent counter-coups and suppress dissidents, fatally shot Park at a Park Jong-hee's private place, Anga, nearby uh, the Blue House. This incident is the main subject of the president's last bang. Arirang Radio. The 1026 incident, as we call it in Korea, is subject to much debate and controversy. Director Im Sang-soo's motives are portrayed as unclear, was it a premediate attempt based on opposition to Park's dictatorship or an impulsive act based on a power struggle between Kim and presidential chief bodyguard Cha j i c h o l I'm inclined for the former, though. The film seizes upon these uncertainties and accentuates them with perfect dashes of dark humor. 
In the president's last bang, um, the October 26th incident is adopted with great effect into an absurdist drama, something of a cross between Inbrush and uh, All the King's Men. In this regard, while prior knowledge of historical context is certainly helpful for enjoying the film, but it is not absolutely necessary. There's ample slapstick, for instance, a scene in which Chief Bodyguard Cha, Cha Ji Chol, trots around with a heavily decorated military jacket without pants. The bang in the film's title is a double entendre, President Park's womanizing, while never shown in its full glory, kicks off the film and runs like a comedic venereal disease in the background, suffering outbreaks at opportune moments. I like this film a lot. I know the film took much risk and it paid its price for doing it, but I thought it was worth it. Before this film, we never had a film that specifically centers around the assassination of Park Chung-hee, which I think is the important part of uh, the history of contemporary Korea. And after this film, Nam Sanae Bujangdil, The Man Standing Next, came out in 2020, last year, and it's, uh, it was directed by Woo Min Ho. This film rather focuses on the pre-events that led to the assassination. So we have these two monumental films that portray this historical incident, but I personally prefer The President's Last Bang for its satire and uh, dark humor. Yoon Yeo-jung, the actress, used to say her favorite filmmakers are two Sangsus, <laughs> Im Sangsu and Hong Sangsu. And Im Sangsu and Yoon Yeo-jung did three films together, including The Taste of Money, Dune Mat, The Housemaid, Hanyo, the remake of Kim Gi Young's original, and Good Lawyer's Wife, Param Nan Gajo. And this film, Good Lawyer's Wife, was Im Sangsu's first film to reach number one at the Korean box office. Thanks in part to, I think, the suggested post movie poster and trailer campaign centered on star Moon Sori, who was cast after Kim Hesu dropped out of um, uh, the project. This film is about the various affairs of members of a dysfunctional Korean family. And the film was also screened in the main competition program at the 2003 Venice International Film Festival. I think it is by far the best film by Im Sang-soo. So please check it out later if you have time. 